for another live video. First, let's do a sound check. Anybody can hear me. Wait for people to come on here. All right, that's looking pretty good. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to zoom in if we can. All right, that looks pretty good. All right. Oh, Arturo is back from Honduras. Nice to see you there. All right. Well, hello, everyone out there. I never know when exactly these lives actually release. All right. Arturo says everything is good. Let me know if the mic is too low or too high. If, uh, if I need to turn it down, that's okay. Uh, but this should be an entertaining lesson for people. And also, if you have questions, Ala, nice to see you there from Toronto. And all right. We should be ready to roll. All right, so uh, in this video, no, thanks for your time, Arturo. It's nice to see you there. This is my chance to help out uh, since I don't get to teach. Or I shouldn't say I don't get to teach, but I don't, uh, I don't have any personal classroom like lessons anymore. Everything I do is online. Uh, so it's my pleasure and it's a, a fun thing for me to do. Even if I can't speak with people personally, uh, I can still talk with you and get in the chat with everybody and it's nice to connect with, uh, with all the learners out there. I do miss teaching in the classroom, although I also teach my own children. Uh, but anyway, in this video, we're going to talk about why lessons are not getting you fluent uh, and especially this is for people who have been learning for a long time. Maybe you're watching YouTube videos all the time and you're still not becoming a more confident speaker. Uh, but this will explain why that happens and what you should be doing. Well, hopefully, uh, it looks like we're having some more people join us. So hello out there. Uh, I did this lesson on uh, Instagram about like a couple days ago actually on Monday this week so it is now Thursday morning here in Japan uh, and hello wherever you happen to be and I talked about the three different ways that people are learning uh, and most of the people are learning kind of the the typical traditional way and then you've got a few people who are learning in the way I teach and so that's wanting to get more people who actually want to speak so if you already are happy with your speaking you should stop watching this video now because it's not necessary for you uh, and it will not help you anyway uh, but if you have been watching more videos and you'd like to become a better speaker this video will help you all right so let's talk about why uh, most lessons are not getting you fluent so the, there are basically three, let me draw, make sure everyone can see this up here. There's one here, two here, and three. So the different ways that people are learning and specifically the way people review. Oh, four all nice to see there from, from LA. Very cool. All right, so we have, uh, if you can imagine, let's say we just have a word or a phrase, most of the videos you will find on YouTube, even if they are teaching you all in English and they are teaching you conversational vocabulary, which is fantastic. Most of them give you little or no review. So we're gonna put a little dot right here. And this dot just means you're going to review something, not at all. You're going to see something maybe one time and then, well, you can tell me. So let me know in the chat. When I asked this, I had some interesting responses from people on Instagram. Uh, but if you see a phrase, so like a word or phrase, whatever, uh, even if you maybe find like 10 words or phrases in one lesson, uh, what's going to happen if you only see that one time? So let me know in the chat. I just want to get more people actually commenting and, you know, using your English a little bit, actually staying a bit more uh, active in the video with me. So let me know, you watch something one time, uh, I would forget. So Allah says, I would forget. Anybody else? Anybody thinks they would, they would learn to speak something fluently if they heard it one time? Now I'm actually reading uh, a book. I'll show it to you. Now I read, uh, just like I recommend students read, this is a uh, Japanese book. It's actually a Japanese comic book. Uh, called Doraemon, which I really enjoy. And there are lots of uh, interesting phrases and words in here that I uh, did not know. Uh, and when I learn those, I can think, ah, like that was a really interesting phrase. But if I only see it one time, I'm definitely forgetting the vocabulary. All right. 
Oh, geez, 2 a.m. in Poland. Nice. All right. Welcome, Peter. <laughs> so if you see something one time, yes, uh, you'll forget it. Well, me too, Doraima. Yeah, I, I really I really enjoy the comic. It's very funny. We watch the, uh, the cartoon uh, on Sundays here in Japan with my kids. But I just started reading the comic. I wanted something to read. Uh, I read try to read different things in Japanese. But the point is, if I learn something only one time, I'm probably going to forget that. You have to have maybe like a, an incredible mind to remember things and be able to use something fluently. Unfortunately, this is what most people are doing when they watch YouTube videos that only teach them something and then don't come back and review it again. But let's take this uh, to the next level. So if you, if you watch something one time, you will likely forget it. All right, everybody agrees about that. There should be no argument really. Maybe you remember, but most likely you, you will forget that information. So the second thing you can do, we're going to take that word or phrase again, and then we're going to repeat that. Now what happens here? Who becomes fluent by taking a word or phrase and repeating it again and again? What happens? All right. Now this is again just to demonstrate the different ways that people are kind of learning with vocabulary and it could even be the same phrase, but how you learn it really makes a big deal. So if you take one phrase or one word, whatever that thing is, and you see it only one time or you hear it only one time, you are likely going to forget that. But if you see that one phrase many, many times, let's say you use spaced repetition. This just means you're going to space out the time when you're reviewing something. Uh, so let's say you have a timeline here. So you see the phrase the first time and then you wait some amount of time and you see it again and again and maybe a little bit further out like that. We're going to space out the repetition, but you're still just repeating the phrase. So anybody doing this, what happens? So I will recognize the phrase in reading or speech. Yeah. All right. So I'll another Excellent response. So if you get repetition, so we're going to repeat something, this will probably help you with your passive vocabulary. But why? The interesting question is why? Why does it only help you with your passive vocabulary? Now you might remember the phrase, you might even be able to use it, but if the goal is fluency, what are we missing? What are we missing? All right. So just to review, I always like to repeat myself, but I'm going to say things in different ways. You'll notice this is kind of a clue for learning here. Oh, Rami, nice to see you there from Morocco. We actually have lots of students from Morocco. Ho hopefully uh, more people are joining us from Morocco. It would actually be nice to go out there. I've never been to Africa before. Uh, so anyway, we begin with one thing, one time. And then we begin with, or I guess we continue with, one thing, and then we're going to repeat that a bunch of times, and we develop a passive vocabulary. Maybe you recognize that word when you hear it in a conversation or see it in a movie, and maybe you can even remember and use that phrase in a conversation. But is it going to help you speak fluently? Is it going to help you speak fluently? What are we still missing? Any ideas? Again, this is me trying to get you to, to think something. Nope. All right. Now, why not? So if the question is, will it help you speak fluently? So we know this one is probably not going to get you fluent. And that's because you will likely forget the vocabulary. But this one, it helps you build a passive vocabulary, but why does it not, why does that not, that one phrase give you, uh, give you fluency? All right. Now I actually explained to students that you can become fluent in individual words and phrases, just being able to understand them and use them correctly. But what are we still missing? What are we still missing? Any ideas? Especially if you've seen me talk in videos, uh, especially recently, I'm trying to explain more and more, trying to help more people understand how to learn uh, because my focus is really fluency. All right, Ty says, or is it thigh or Ty? Maybe Ty. Uh, no practice. Okay, so we've got no practice. Anything else? What are we still missing? What are we missing? So no practice. No practice. But you have to think, what does that really mean? What does it mean to practice some vocabulary? What does it mean you practice? This is basically practicing the vocabulary here. The root. What does that mean? The root. 
Like the root word of something? What are you talking about? What is the root? So when people talk about practicing vocabulary, typically they mean repetition. We're just going to take a word or a phrase and repeat it again and again. Or we used spaced repetition like some flashcards uh, or a, an app that's going to tell us, okay, here's the, the word or phrase and we're going to see it again and again uh, just in the future. So it's still basically repetition. So what are we still missing here and why? Listening, yeah. So you could hear it again and again and again. It's maybe not just writing it or reading something, but we want to know what are we, what are we still missing? What's the difference between this? So we, we might think about this as like a classroom learning activity. I'm, I'm beginning, I'm the teacher, I say, hello class. Today we are going to learn a phrase and this phrase is a simple greeting. It is, how are you? Now repeat after me, how are you? And then I have you repeat. How are you? 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 Memorization. So we'll put listening up here. Memorization. Yep, so you might be able to remember, remember this if you repeat it again and again. Remember, we have this example over here. We learn one phrase one time. The meaning, yeah, the, well, yeah, I'll, I'll put that up here. Now you should hopefully understand the meaning if the teacher is doing a good job of helping you understand something. Uh, a high level teacher will help you understand like a native. Our brain is not taking those phrases and words out in the right moment. I think you're, you're, get, you're on to something, Ali. Tell me more, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Now imagine we're in a classroom. This is your chance to actually, you know, like say, hey teacher, let me, let me explain something to you. Thinking in English, thinking in English. Thinking in English. Now, what does that mean? Now, I want people to be specific. We need to recreate the situation and that we will use the word. Let me go back to that one. Eve. Eve gets a gold star. Very good. I'm going to put Eve's name up here. With a, that's supposed to be a star. <laughs> I'm, you know I'm not, I'm not such a great drawer. Let me, let me draw a better star up here. We'll draw a do, 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 do. So Eve gets a gold star for that, but why, all right? So this is the really interesting thing that most people don't think about, but they're, they have kind of a general idea about what they're missing. So in general, so we should not translate words in our mother language. Yes, so that's a, a part of the learning as well. But this lesson specifically is about how people remember and how we go from learning to fluency. What specifically are we missing? What is the thing that most people are missing uh, that most people should be doing? So again, we've got the basic idea. All right, let me see here. We've got the basic idea of learning something once and you forget it. You learn something and repeat it a bunch of times and still it's not really becoming part of your fluent vocabulary. All right, now let me show you why. But all right, we've already had uh, a couple of good responses. Eve, especially uh, very good. <clears throat> and I'll explain what that is in just a moment. But let me just look at this. If we're imagining a real conversation, all right? So we have, this is the kind of school example. What he says is a native way to learn. So hi from Brazil, you need to feel it. Yes, yeah, so we got, we got some interesting responses. Everybody is kind of generally right there. Eve was the closest one to the target, all right? So yes, as I talk about learning like a native, understanding like a native, and this, is, this video is about how to do that, all right? So we talk generally about understanding or not translating or other things like learning like a child that but like what specifically does that mean okay so why so adrian is asking why all right i don't know what what specifically why why for what question <laughs> let me know what that means but all right so in general we've got first level here where you learn something one time and you don't learn it again you probably forget that now the next thing, even if you learn one thing and you repeat it again and again, you might remember that. It might remain in your passive vocabulary, but will it really help you in a conversation? And the reason it doesn't, often, uh, is because the narrow, we're just going to imagine this right here, this one phrase that you're learning in, let's say, we'll just say this is school. So it could be a classroom or it could be uh, like a lesson online, it doesn't matter what that is. But the difference here is that we've got what you learn in school for a particular situation 
And again, schools, I'll talk about that in just a moment about, uh, so Eve mentioned situations and that's really the key. You need, to, you need to live that phrase. Yeah, but what does that mean? What does it mean to live that phrase, to live that phrase? All right, so I want to be concrete. I want to be specific with people so they really understand how to learn. All right, so the big problem is that you have in a classroom, usually a teacher will, will typically give you a translation of something, especially if you're learning in a regular, like a sit-down classroom. You might be learning all in English, which is great, but typically what your teacher is using and what natives are using are often different things. So we can imagine it like this. In a situation where you're talking about, you know, let's say we're talking about the World Cup. So that's a soccer match or a football happening right now. Um, and you might have an English lesson about the World Cup. And it will teach you, you know, a particular phrase or maybe a few phrases about that. But natives have a much wider range of the things they're actually talking about. So you might hear uh, a phrase, like let's say we'll do something very simple like uh, good morning. So you learn a phrase, maybe you hear the uh, example in your native language and then you hear it in English. Good morning, and we learn we're going to practice that. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. But maybe in a conversation, people have all kinds of different greetings that you're not prepared for. So even something easier than this that you probably know is hello. So we begin with a greeting, like a word or phrase. We're going to use hello, for example. And you might hear lots of different examples of this. You might hear, hey. Can you think of any other examples that a native might use in a real conversation when they're just giving a greeting like that? So instead of saying, hey, what else might a native use? Can you think of anything? I bet you can. What do you say when you greet someone? Can you give me an example? So we've got, hey up here. Can you think of any more? What about hi? Let me know in a comment. So we've got hello up here. This is the hello, the typical word you would find. What's up? Howdy. Okay. So this was also in, uh, in, the, last, in the last video on Instagram. What's up? Howdy. Sup? So even the, the shortened version of, what, of uh, what's up, sup, sup, how's it going? How's it going? What's new? Hey you, very good. There you can say hey or hey you. Okay, what news? Yeah. You could say what's new or what news or anything new. There are lots of different ways. How you doing? How you been? Yep, excellent. So lots of different ways of expressing this. And if you hear, now you probably know a lot of these. This greeting is a very simple idea. But the point, you can think about a situation and think, wow, if you only learn one thing, even if you repeat it again and again, you're still going to have trouble with that. Let's see. Well, in Ethiopia, it's 4.30. Yes, <laughs> 4.30 in the morning. It is uh, 11, almost, yeah, it's like 10.30 in the morning in Japan. All right? So we have a word or phrase, and there are actually many different ways of saying this. All right, now Eve, before she had the, uh, the answer about what we really need to do in order to get fluent. All right, now the fluency begins... So you have usually one phrase, but that phrase comes from, and let me, let me uh, actually erase this up here and make this very clear for people. I'm going to write this in red. All right, so we have a word or phrase. A word or phrase. So the word or phrase, whatever that word is, you hear the word hello, and then you hear it one time, you probably forget it. Next, you have the word or phrase, like hello, and you repeat it many times. Maybe you remember that in conversations. Uh, maybe you say it, probably it's just going to remain in your vocabulary, like your uh, passive vocabulary here. Now, this is a simple example. Most people remember the word hello, but you can imagine something more difficult. Now, what happens when we get to level three over here is we're not thinking about words or phrases anymore. We're thinking, as Eve said, about situations. 
All right, now this is very important. I know it's, it, it might sound a little bit weird that they are actually quite similar, but the, the way of thinking is different. So thinking about a word or phrase, this is something that a learner does. A native is thinking about situations, okay? And this is why in this situation, so like a, a, a school, a regular teacher is going to think, hey, we have one phrase and we just need to repeat that again and again. But a native is actually learning a wide range of different things that could all be in that same situation. All right? So you might have, you know, that same word might be over here. You might have hello. But you've still got all these other things that are happening in that same situation. So natives are thinking about in this situation, what do we do? What do we say? All right, that's how you think like a native speaker. You're not thinking about words or phrases because that's more thinking about translating something from one language into another. What we're thinking about is situations and how do we have something like, in this situation, what do natives say? And when you think like this, it actually trains you to think and respond because you're actually watching what natives are doing. You're watching how natives are responding in this situation and you understand that there are many different ways to respond, okay? So in the situation about like greeting someone, we might have greeting like, hello, thanks a lot teacher, glad to hear it. Uh, sir, it's my pleasure to help you guys understand this. It took me a while to figure this out on my own, but once I figured it out, then I finally became fluent in Japanese. So I stopped trying to learn or repeat in order to memorize uh, phrases in Japanese, and I just started focusing on situations. Now, this might seem like a small thing. It's like, okay, well, words and phrases and situations, it's all the same thing. It's not, okay? The reason it's not is because of this much wider range of possibility that you have in a conversation. So natives are preparing for all of this wider range of things that you might hear in a real conversation. Now we have the greeting, which is a very simple example, like saying hello, or hi, or what's up, or howdy, sup, how's it going, what's new? Those are things that you've probably heard before. But in another situation, like you go to a grocery store and someone just asks you a random question about something, you might be, oh, oh no, I'm not prepared for that thing because you were only thinking about this one thing that you learned in you know, a classroom or a textbook or from a course. All right, does everybody understand this idea so far? So we have one thing here, you learn a phrase, one phrase, one word, and you learn it one time and actually you just forget that. And this is what happens with most people learning on YouTube. So they watch a video, there could be you know 10 hours of, of training or whatever, 10 hours of words and phrases we're going to practice. But the next day, do you really remember that? And then can you really use it fluently? Most people cannot. Oh, Sonia, nice to see you there. Hello from Chile. All right, so if you learn something one time, you will likely forget it. And even if you repeat that thing, you're spending time repeating something when it's a much better idea to actually spend your time learning a bunch of different things related to that. And you do that when you're thinking about situations rather than vocabulary. All right, I wanna make sure everybody, everybody understood this. Does everybody understand this idea? This is very important for people who want to speak, all right? Well, not only people who want to speak, but also people who want to understand uh, and still have, you know, even if you're just watching uh, videos or whatever and just wanting to watch movies, that kind of thing. All right, Marco says, Master, I'm studying English, listening to radio soap opera, repeating it for a few months now, but my pronunciation has only improved because I started from scratch, but my pronunciation has only improved. Does that mean your, like, your other skills have not improved? Because I started uh, from scratch with English. Yeah, let, let me know more about your situation. Uh, do you do this exact situation in Japanese? So Samir is asking, yes, this is how I, I started. I had to teach myself Japanese, and it's basically the same, the same way that natives are learning the language. So a young, a young child, they're in a, let's say they're, they're at the park, and, they, uh, and they, they watch an adult uh, like say hello to another adult. They're going to hear lots of different greetings in the same way that you would hear different greetings in English. Sometimes people would say konnichiwa, like a regular greeting, but you might hear like, oi, genki, 
These are all different greetings that you hear in Japanese. And if you learn only like one example uh, in, a, in a textbook or something, even if you repeat that thing, it's not going to prepare you for the wider range of things that you'll experience in a real conversation. Okay, that's the, that's the main idea of this. So when I'm doing the same thing, what I'm actually doing uh, as a learner of Japanese is I'm going first from the situation. As an example, I've talked about this a couple of times on this channel, uh, and this is like going to a coffee shop in Japan and just sitting and listening to people ordering food, okay? So I can go to a Starbucks or, you know, whatever regular coffee shop, it doesn't matter, and I can sit. I like going to Starbucks because they have a lot of customers, so I can sit and listen to many people ordering something like that. And the situation, I'm not thinking about like word or phrase, I'm thinking what do people do in this situation? What do people do in this situation? So when people are ordering a cup of coffee, uh, what do they do? How do they order that? And just like in English, there are different ways people can ask for something. In a typical classroom, they will teach you maybe one or two things, but natives have a much wider range of the vocabulary they're using, all right? Now, it's not just about vocabulary. It's also about listening and pronunciation. If you hear one teacher say something, and even if they repeat it, I could say, hello, 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 hello. You might not understand when you hear someone else with a different accent or they're faster or something else, you know, whatever. Each person has their own unique voice. And so it's much easier for you to improve and prepare for a range of things if you hear not only uh, different words and phrases related to, this sub, uh, related to this situation, but also different voices at different speeds, hearing these in different contexts, okay? Does this make sense? I'm going to keep repeating myself because this is such an important thing for the people who want to speak fluently or even who just want to understand movies and TV shows and things much more easily, all right? Some telegram group over here. I don't know if anybody's doing that. I don't organize anything about that though, but people are certainly welcome to do whatever they like. All right, let's see. Uh, Ed Nielsen says, hey, Drew Adam, thank you for your help in my case. We met in 2016 and you challenged me to immerse myself in a room at my home minimum 60 minutes a day. And then when I noticed I was understanding. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. So again, you're, it's, when people talk about immersion, it's, it's difficult to, to think about what that really means. You're actually putting yourself like in a, in a specific way about learning uh, as a native, but you have to do it in a structured way, a systematic way. So if you, tr like when I came to Japan, I didn't know really any Japanese at all. And I spent the first year doing like mostly this. <laughs> So I would learn something and forget it. Sometimes I would feel like a good student and repeat something again and again. But often I would still not understand people in situations like actual conversations. Okay? So even if you, you can study something a lot, I can be a really good student. I can learn a word or phrase and remember it and, and try to repeat that again and again. But this is not going to help me if I'm in a conversation and people don't use that or if people are, they're speaking with a hard to understand accent, all right? So uh, I use space repetition. So, see, what I'm recommending is you do not use space repetition. You do not use space repetition, spaced repetition, all right? So the, the, the point of the way of, of learning like this is, is imagining uh, that you only have a certain amount of time each day that you can learn. Some people are just in an English environment all the time, and even if they are, they're probably not learning that systematically or reviewing the things they need to learn. Uh, but the, the point is, if you have 10 minutes, if you only have 10 minutes to learn something, so let's say you got 10 minutes up here. I'm gonna put a little, little clock. If you only have 10 minutes to learn something, you have a few choices. You can try, number one, we're gonna learn 10 words and then we will probably forget them. <laughs> so you got option one is to learn 10 words. And you got option two, we're gonna take one word and then repeat it again and again. So one word and repeat it. 
Option three is actually to learn and focus on a situation and hear lots of different people say different things about that situation. Okay? So in 10 minutes, and I guess maybe the, the fourth option is to, is to try to find someone to repeat, but it's, it's basically the same thing. So we'll put speaking practice here. Now, which of these is going to prepare you best for being in a real conversation? Learning 10 phrases that you forget or practicing one phrase and trying to repeat that again and again or knowing a bunch of different phrases that are related to something? Which do you think is going to be best preparing you for real conversations? Now this, if you look at this example, we connect all these things because your brain is making this connection naturally. We're making these connections and that's why this builds a network. It's the vocabulary network that allows you to speak fluently, okay? It's not just knowing some vocabulary. It's the network, all right? And the reason the network is so important is because if you forget this, well, that's the end of that vocabulary. You can't remember that one. And if you forget this one, too, in a conversation or someone uses something different or you can't understand them, then that's the end of that vocabulary. But in this one, if you forget something, maybe you can easily switch to something else because you remember a different way of saying something. Remember, not all natives speak the same way. Each person has a unique way of speaking, a unique voice. Their pronunciation is going to be a little bit different, all right? And so when you forget one thing, your brain just switches to something else very quickly. This is what natives are doing. Repeat just one word in 20 minutes. All right. So if you do number two, you will not build fluency. If you do number one, you will not build fluency. But if you do number three, that's how you will build fluency. And what you'll notice about this is that when you learn this way, even if you don't have someone to practice with, the practice is the input. <clears throat> The practice is getting all this. So there is repetition there, okay? You are reviewing the vocabulary. You might hear something, but you might hear it slightly differently from another speaker. So your dad says something, then your mom says that same phrase. Maybe your sister or brother says that same phrase, and each time you're still repeating it, but you're hearing it in a different way. That's preparing you for conversations, okay? So it's not repeating the same thing. Like if one teacher says something over and over again, you're listening to my voice. And this is why people who watch my videos, they know my voice, they can understand me very well. And they say, Drew, I, I like the way you speak. It's so clear, I can understand you. I wish everyone spoke like you. I wish all native speakers spoke as clearly as you do. But they don't. So this is Drew's voice. Drew's voice is in this range right here, but natives are in a much wider range. And so you might hear and understand my voice, but other people will have uh, a more difficult time because the accents are different or they're using vocabulary that you don't know. Okay? But if you're focusing on situations and you're building your network with lots of different input from different native speakers, that's how you're going to become fluent. Now, the reason we know this works is because this is how you got fluent in your native language. Let me say that again. This is how you got fluent in your native language. This is what it means to learn like a native and to understand like a native speaker. The reason you develop this is because you are learning situations, all right? In your native language, you could not translate anything as a young child. If you're one year old, two years, three years, four years, you're not writing or reading either. The only way you can get information is to connect vocabulary with situations. All right? So you're not trying to translate words or phrases. You're not trying to translate and then repeat words or phrases. You're really trying to build a network in your mind of being prepared for conversations the same way natives are. Does anyone have any questions about this? Let me go back and make sure. All right. Uh, all right, so Abraham says... And that's why we see how fast are those who move to the U.S. are learning the language. Yes, so there are, there are many people who, who improve by being in an English-speaking environment, but I know many people who live in the United States, just like I know many uh, like Americans or other foreigners who live here in Japan and still don't speak Japanese. Okay? 
your environment is helpful, but the, this is much more important. How you learn is the most important factor in, in your learning. If you want to become fluent, it doesn't matter where you live. You can become a fluent speaker anywhere in the world if you learn this way. If you build your network, if you're prepared for conversations. <clears throat> All right, and Endelson says, today I'm watching a film in English and understanding, then I decided to learn French by myself. And voila, aujourd'hui. Oh, okay, I don't know that. Jean Tring, yeah, I pronounce French. All right, well, it sounds like you can speak French and English. Very good. <laughs> All right, yes, it makes sense. Let's see. Interesting, says Adrian. All right, I used, okay, we had read that one already. It makes sense, says Lorena. How can I have those situations? Here in my country, just schools, we have very few Native people. All right, so Thai, let me know if I'm, if I'm saying that correctly. Is it Thai or, or Thai? Probably Thai. All right, but I want to make sure people understand this. If you hear one phrase or word, like you're translating, okay, I have this word in Japanese, uh, konnichiwa, how do I say that in English? then you're learning something and you probably forget it if you hear it one time. Even if you repeat the same phrase, it will probably be forgotten or it will just remain in your passive vocabulary. It won't really help you develop fluency. But if you think about situations, this is how you get that. So where do you get these situations from? Does anybody have any idea about that? How can we do this? Now I can just give you the answer, but it's more fun if I get you to think about this. So if this doesn't get you fluent, and we know this doesn't get you fluent because it just lets you forget information. You're basically wasting your time if you do this, if you learn something and forget it. Learn something and forget it. Learn something and forget it. And this one, you're just basically, you're getting repetition, which your brain doesn't even like. Your brain doesn't want to just repeat things. That's why people make spaced repetition because it's, tr it's trying to force information into your brain. Your brain does not want to do that. Your brain is always interested in new information. All right, I'm looking around, I go to a new school, I'm looking around, who are all these new people? I want to know all I can. I'm very interested and excited about that because they're new. But once I know about people, it's like, all right, well, I know about that person. I'm only interested in learning about new things. And that's why all the, the content on YouTube is designed to keep you interested. It's new, 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 new. We're gonna give you some new words or phrases, but you're just going to forget them. And even if you get repetition, it's, your brain is not trying to, even if, you, even if you do remember that word or phrase, you're not prepared for the much wider range of things that you will encounter in real conversations. All right? I want to make that very clear. Even if this works, even if you're repeating things, it's not going to help you in conversations. You might know one phrase or word, uh, but you really need to be prepared for the situation. That's the key. All right. Let's see, go back, uh, so repeat just one, okay, we had that one. Uh, Danny, your, your method is unique all the time. All right, now what I'm telling you is not, is not unique. <laughs> this is how you learned your native language. It's more like a forgotten method because most people think that they can't learn English this way or they can't learn a second language or another language this way. But the truth is it's how you learn any new language. If I wanted to learn Polish or German or Portuguese or whatever, this is how I would do it. But I don't have like a teacher. I'd have to get that information myself, all right? And I'm not familiar. I don't think anybody else teaches the way I do uh, for this anyway. But if they did, that's how I would learn. All right, so Javid says, Sir, your English fluency bits are awesome. I take much help to prepare students for fluency conversation. Yeah, so English fluency bits. He's talking about these uh, specific phrases like be that as it may. These are phrases in conversations that really you can kind of learn the little pieces of things and then put them together uh, and actually sound much more native. All right, thanks for the content. Hey, I'm a linguist. It does make sense. Awesome. <laughs> yes, I'm glad to be, glad to be uh, getting corroboration. So the uh, people are talking about this uh, as, as from a linguist. That's great. All right, uh, so movie clips can help. My fluency is blocked when I start translate phrases in my native language. Yeah, so Lorena has that same problem again. You're typically learning one way. Uh, you're getting one kind of information again and again. And it's not, it's, again, it's the network that enables you to speak. So if you can't find uh, one thing, like, or you can't hear or can't understand that particular phrase in a conversation, or natives just use something different, then you're screwed. It just means like you're, you're in the conversation, I, I don't know what that person just said to me. I don't know what to do. All right, all right, let's see here. So how do we get that information? 
Does anybody have an idea for that? How can we get this? Okay, then, if can't be fluent by repetition, can you explain again that method? So Juan is asking again. All right. Remember, just to, I want to make sure everybody believes me about this. All right. If we all agree, because if we don't agree, then, you know, there's not much I can do to help you. But if you are, in general, this video or the videos I make are for people who have learned English for a long time and still have trouble speaking fluently. Okay. So the reason that happens is because most people either learn something one time and forget it, so they're trying to learn lots of new information, and this is something I tell people all the time, but if you're learning more words and phrases, but you can't use your current vocabulary fluently, you're just wasting your time. All right? So most learners, this is what most learners are doing. Either they learn something once and they forget it, or they try to repeat something, and it's really hard to do that because your brain does not want to repeat information. It's just not interested in doing that. Your brain is designed to be looking for new information all the time. All right, this is, it's, if you just look at like brain, brain science, brain research, this is what they tell us about how the brain learns. And you can, you just know this in your normal everyday life. When you're watching the news, people want to know what's new, what's new all the time. They don't care about what's old. <laughs> They want to know what's new. So that's why we ask people, what's new? How are you? Like, what is the new thing happening in your life? I don't want to know what I already know. I want to know what's new. Okay, we're constantly interested in new information. All right, but the only way to get repetition and have that, that still satisfy the brain for new information is this. So this is what I call, if you already know this, what do I call this? Let's see, if, who's the, who are my my prize students out there. What do I call this kind of learning? When you're getting lots of different examples, you're getting lots of different examples in different ways, in different times, at different speeds, what do I call that? Who knows? It's three words. What do I call that? I'll leave people to figure that out. All right, so to make sure Juan knows what I'm talking about here, so I've been following you since 2017, and I got to you very helpful. Thank you for coming on YouTube, watching movies, interviews. All right, what do I call this? So this is learning something once and forgetting it. This is repetition, okay? The goal is to, is to re repeat the information but not get it exactly. Wonderful technique, I believe you. Claudette, thank you very much. <laughs> Remember, it's, it's not even that you really need to believe me because this is how you learned your native language. Okay, this is how you learned your native language. And it's the only way you could learn your native language. Imagine some aliens coming into, you know, they're coming down to the planet. We can't translate anything because nobody knows their language and they don't know our language. And maybe they can try to read and write uh, but they're not going to have good conversations with us. So I will try to teach this way. Thank you for reminding it. Okay. <clears throat> so what I call, naturally, naturally varied review. Naturally varied review. This is just the name I call to understanding vocabulary by learning about situations the same way natives do. All right? This idea, especially, very, very important. You have a very narrow range of something. It's just what a teacher might explain in a classroom. But here, wow, this is what natives are actually using in conversations. And so when students say, teacher, I understand you very well, but when I get into a conversation, they usually say, I can't understand because it's too fast. I don't know the vocabulary, or I can't understand the accents, okay? So teachers are preparing you for this. And if you hear something in this range, then you feel great. Like, yeah, I understood what that person said. But as soon as it's outside of that range, then you feel bad about that because you can't understand what people are talking about. So this is learning like a student in a classroom. This is learning like a native. Naturally varied review. Any questions about that? Okay. Go back and check comments here. Got some good comments. Let's see. Conversation, generalization, top demog. Very cool, very cool. All right. I don't know if that's talking about me or not. That's why I usually talk about it to my son. Surround yourself with a language you want to learn, then your brain used to it, a more course. 
search for more information on all Reese's. I understand you perfectly, but when I'm going to speak, I can't do it. Yeah. Al aliens usually speak English in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't, I don't, they, maybe some old movies they do that, but typically uh, aliens are, you know, they're, they're, we're trying to communicate with them in some way. If you remember the movie Independence Day, that was, I don't know, 20 years ago, I think, and they tried to use some flashing lights or something. It's like, why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. And I think the movie The Arrival did something similar. So they're trying to, you know, trying to teach, like, trying to connect with the aliens in some way. But it's actually very simple if you want to do that. You need to, you know, make it, make it clear what the rules of the language are, and it's pretty easy to do that. It's actually very easy to do that. All right, repeat the last one again I just joined. <laughs> Please make smooth standard for teaching and giving recommendation. I don't know what that means. Please make smooth stand. So repeat that last one again. All right. Now I know some people are just joining us. So let me give a quick uh, Independence Day. That what happened to Brazil. Well, Drew regards from Brazil. It's late here. All right. Yes. So in linguistics, we tend to differentiate language learning from language acquisition, the latter being the natural way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So again, this one, like uh, language learning is what you might call what a computer does. You put information into a computer and the computer has a database uh, and a computer can learn this way. A computer won't forget because that's what computers do. Computers remember information. <clears throat> but preparing a, uh, a computer to actually have a conversation with people, that's a bit more difficult. Now acquisition, so uh, again, what we just got over there, the difference between language learning and language acquisition, this is where you're actually preparing yourself to speak, okay? And the reason you're preparing yourself to speak is because you're prepared for that much wider range of situations than you are in a typical classroom. So you learn a few words or phrases, you hear them clearly and slowly, but in a real conversation, you're going to hear fast speech, difficult accents, you're going to hear new phrases that you're just not prepared for in a conversation you know, from, a, from a language classroom. So they speak English plus echo effect, all right. Uh, so Peter, yes, thank you very much. Okay, so Adrian says, perfectly okay. Where to find the materials of different situations or information to practice? Okay, so this is the key. So this is what I was doing. So when I first came to Japan, I gave an example <coughs> of this. I spent about a year trying to learn Japanese like this. So I would learn some new information from textbooks. So this was back almost 20 years ago when I came to Japan. So YouTube wasn't even around then. YouTube is 2006, I think. So a few years after I came to Japan and there weren't, nobody was teaching languages on YouTube that early, really. My channel is from 2010 and there were only a few channels, I think, uh, even teaching languages on YouTube before that, a few years prior to that. <clears throat> But uh, I was using, I was living in Japan, so I was still surrounded by Japanese people. But it was, it was like, a, like trying to drink from a fire hose. It just, blah, all this uh, information coming to me all the time. And I couldn't, I couldn't process it. You know, it's just like you drop someone into a pool, and if they can't swim, then they sink, and then that's the end. So I got very frustrated because I'm kind of in the middle uh, of of the native environment and the traditional learning, language learning way of learning. And I forgot most of what I learned and some of it I remembered, but it was only in my passive vocabulary. Uh, I'm using a visual guide to phrasal verbs to, yes, so that's a great program. It will help you do that, visual guide to phrasal verbs. So how do we get this information? Does anyone have any idea about that? So what was I, what was I thinking when I, when I realized this? Now, in my own story, so I spent, if you don't know my story already, does anyone, anyone know how I learned Japanese? Does everybody know that story? I'll tell it very quickly. So I came to Japan in 2003, like I mentioned, uh, I wanted to learn Japanese gardening. But I couldn't get a visa to do that, so I got in uh, by teaching. And so I, I really enjoy teaching, and you can see I'm still teaching today. I actually don't do much at all with gardening. Uh, but so I came in 2003, and for <clears throat> about the first year, I'm still using uh, traditional methods. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, it was here that I noticed that native speakers don't do what I was doing. So native speakers don't learn that way, and if native speakers are speaking, maybe I should try doing what they're doing. And so I started thinking about the differences in the way that we learn. So how do natives learn 
versus how to uh, how to non-native. So how to regular English teachers or how to how to English students or language students. In my case, learning uh, Japanese. Uh, let me know what you have to review to learn before. Well, I'll come back to that question in a second. But the point is, uh, so I'm around native Japanese speakers all day. You know, just I've worked at a, at a Japanese school and there was lots of people speaking Japanese all day, but I couldn't understand it. I'm, it's just overwhelming with lots of English and I couldn't really follow anything. Uh, and then I tried to study, but I forgot most of what I learned. But during a walk in a park here, that's where I realized, ah, I watched children and I noticed that they were learning like this. They were getting the understanding that they needed without translating, so that was the first part, all right? So they have to learn everything all in the language that they're learning. Now, in, uh, Peter would know this is the, com uh, excuse me, let me get some water. Ugh, comprehensive, <laughs> I can't speak. Comprehensible input. So comprehend means to understand something. So children are getting information they can understand all in Japanese. And when I saw that, I said, wait a minute, I should stop trying to learn through translations because if I learn through translations, then I will speak through translations as well. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So how you learn is how you speak. If you learn through translations, then you will speak through, tr through translations as well. And so once I saw that, I said, okay, I need to start getting situations like this. And one example of that, like I just mentioned before, is going to like a coffee shop. There are many different ways to do this. We'll talk about them in just a moment, but this is just one example where I would sit in a coffee shop and just watch how people order food. And I try not to be obvious. I would, you know, pretend like I'm reading a book, but I would sit near the counter and I would just hear like people would walk up and order food. And I would listen all these different ways that people are ordering food. Now you can think about it like on a, on a, like a, like a, like a chart or whatever. So there might be like, let's say, 30 different things people would say. Now, some of those things are going to be used very frequently. Some of them will be used maybe less frequently, less frequently like that. So let's imagine like each one of these is a phrase used in a, in a conversation or in a situation. So let's say they might say uh, like, may I please have something? So may I please, let's say this one is like the most common, may I please. Now I have not, I don't have the statistics for this. I'm not going to give you exact numbers about this, but this is the basic idea. So may I have, or you will also hear like, can I have, or can I get, now this is not Japanese. I'm giving you the English version of this, but it's the same basic idea. So you might hear like one phrase out here, one phrase out here, but in general, you will have like a kind of plot of all these different phrases. And some of them will be used a lot some of them will be used very infrequently, but they will be used. And the point is not to learn all of them and to remember all of these words or phrases. It's more to get an understanding of this is the kind of thing that people would use. And not only the vocabulary, but you're hearing lots of different voices of people teaching you things. Okay, very important. So in a, in a, like a, if you compare this with a typical classroom, you can just look at the, uh, so we'll put this as like the native way and then we'll contrast that with the classroom way over here. So this is the, in the classroom you really get like, here's one phrase, all right? You see the difference? So a classroom will give you maybe one, maybe two phrases. So here's the situation for ordering. So I'm in a coffee shop. What do you say when you order food, all right? The reality in a, in a real, you know, like a, a live coffee shop in the real world is like this. All right, you got some phrases that are used a lot, and this is the kind of thing you might learn in an English conversation class, uh, especially if it's trying to give you conversational English. Now they might make it, uh, as an example, a like I'm, I'm going to teach this to a, a, like a classroom of, you know, just, just some students, and I would say, uh, can, even though this is, it's less correct English, more people use it. So can I have uh, whatever? So can I have a coffee? Can I have a coffee? 
Now I will explain this, can I have a coffee? And I will explain it nice and clearly so people can understand. You can read it like this, ah, can I have a coffee? And so you go home and you try to repeat that phrase over and over again. Can I have a cup of coffee? Now if you go to a coffee shop and you say, can I have a cup of coffee? You will probably be able to order that coffee just fine. And you will be like, yes, all right? So if you go to the coffee shop, but if you are working at a coffee shop, okay, here's the big difference. Like you are going to hear all this. Like, can I get a, uh, like, can I have a, a cup of coffee? You're going to hear all these other things too. So do not work at a coffee shop if you are not prepared for that. <laughs> all right, but does this make sense? So this is just one example and it's one teacher. So it's one voice. Can I have a cup of coffee? Now you might also hear this as like a faster, can I, can I, can I have a cup of coffee? 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 People are, are busy. They're going to work in the morning and maybe they come in, can I have a cup of coffee? Can I have a cup of coffee? Can I have a cup of coffee? Can I, it's like a can I, can I, can I have a cup of coffee? 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 All right. Can I get a table by the window? Same thing. So can I, usually it's, it's spoken quite quickly like this. Can I, can I, can I, all right. It sounds like people are understanding my message here. So this is what I started doing for learning Japanese. And this is how I finally got fluent over here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at particular situations. I'm just focusing on that. So I'm letting the situation, the situation is most important. And from the situation comes the vocabulary. So I didn't begin with like, what is, what is this? It's more like, what do people do in certain situations? So if I drop something on my head in English, I say, ouch, or ah, fuck, or whatever, it de depending on, on how, how painful it is or how I feel about that. Uh, and little kids watch their parents doing that, okay? And in Japanese, even picking up something heavy, you'd say like, Ush. In Japanese, but in English, it's like, oh, even the sound is a little bit different, but it's the same idea. Words are just sounds with meaning. Okay. It's very simple. And so in a language, the little children are watching what people say in different situations. All right. So when to use as much as I can or I could. And so now this is where you start, you, you develop that understanding of the grammar, the more examples you get. So instead of thinking like, when do I say can and when do I use could? That's still thinking like a, like a learner over here. Okay. So the point is not, is not to try to like learn a bunch of rules. The rule comes to you just like you're playing a game and you're watching people do it and you see, ah, like this person does this. Like in Japanese, something falls in my head as a ita, itai, ita. Now there are different ways, again, I'm trying to give you some different ways that people might say that, and there are lots of different ways. I might say like, you know, it's like, fuck, shit, you know, just something like that where I'm expressing pain and anger or whatever. But children watch that and what they're doing is they're connecting the situation with the vocabulary, all right? I'm trying to give you these examples again and again to make sure everybody understands what I'm talking about. Let me go back and check chat right here. Uh, all right, so Claudette, so what do you think about this method? By the way, uh, first time to be here, but this is not my first time to see your videos. I guess I saw you about 11 years ago. Wow, fantastic. Uh, let me know what uh, I have to review that I learned before. Thank you. Okay, I understand. All right, so what do you think about learning through stories? Yeah, so stories are another way you do this. Now, the idea is that there's not, there's not really just one way you do it. It's not just stories or just listening or just watching videos. It's actually all of those things. But to do it systematically means you're staying within the situation and getting lots and lots of varied examples. It's much better, it's a much better use of your time not to repeat one thing by yourself or to try to say that thing over and over again. It's a much better use of your time to build your network and you can do that by yourself. Just like I was talking about at the coffee shop. If you get a hundred examples of different people ordering at a coffee shop, you're going to feel very prepared and you're going to feel very confident about ordering, ordering something or even working at a coffee shop. Okay.
So the goal really is actually to have confidence and certainty, certainty, to be certain, to be 100% sure about things. Because most people who know the language, they only have a passive vocabulary because they don't actually feel very confident about what they know. They might think they know something, but they're worried about the grammar or they're worried about the pronunciation or something. Something is stopping them. There's some doubt, some uncertainty about, about what they want to say, and that's why they don't speak. So it's easy to listen, and you might understand lots of movies, but the point is to, to have the confidence to express yourself. And you build the confidence by building the network. As you build the network, you build the confidence. And this just means getting naturally varied review. Naturally varied review. All right, so people are asking, what do I do if I do not live in an English-speaking country? Let me go back, make sure I had anything else. Uh, it really makes so much sense now, glad to hear. That's exactly how we train neural network. We don't teach it a rule, but we let it figure out from the data. Yeah, so this, this is not a new idea. And again, this is how you all learned your native language. This is how you, you did this already. You've been doing this all your life. All right, all right. So natural learning progress. So what if we don't live in a na uh, native speak, uh, English or a native English country, I'm guessing, uh, watching from Manila, Philippines. All right. So here's how you can do this by yourself. Who would like to do this by themselves? Just let me know. Just comment yes. <laughs> or I can stop the lesson now and just answer other questions. All right. But this is how you do it. So if you learn something one time, you will forget it. Even if you repeat something, you're not going to be prepared for the conversation and you're really, it's just not a good use of your time to spend time repeating something like that. It's much better. You're going to make uh, the most progress in the, in the least amount of time if you build your network with lots of different examples of things. So this is learning systematically. It's like learning like a native, but in a systematic way that, that will be overwhelming to you. Okay. And you're getting naturally varied review. All right, I'm not getting any responses, so I, if I can end it right there. If nobody is interested in how they can do this by themselves, it's up to you. Let me know in the comments uh, below. I'll give you one second as I take another sip of this lovely Japanese water over here. Ah, wow, we've been going for an hour already. All right, let me check the chat here. All right, then I guess that's it. You guys are gonna make my make my job easy over here. <laughs> All right. Hopefully this has been uh, helpful for me. So Muhammad is saying, is there a course for that? Uh, yes, there are two ways to do this. So if you would like to know, let me see here. All right. So there's uh, Matida. That's a nice name, Matita, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So is there a course for that? Uh, so there are two ways to do this. So number one, uh, how to be like a native speaker along with the best accent like British in a home country and a non-native country. Yeah. So again, number one, you can do this anywhere. All right. So you can do this anywhere. You can get naturally varied review anywhere. Okay. Number two, you can do this by yourself. The point here is not to spend time uh, practicing your speech. The practice is the building of the network. This is the practice. In the same way that we're talking about uh, like people building a neural network for a computer, we want to train a computer system. You don't talk to the computer, you just feed it lots of information. This is how you do it systematically. You're learning lots of words and phrases related to a subject and you're focusing on that. You're listening to different speakers. You're listening to different accents, different speeds, different times, different examples. So your brain isn't bored by that information. This way, the repetition way is very boring to your brain. All right. So what if I speak to a mirror and record myself? No, don't do that. That's a waste of your time too. Again, if you only have, let's say you have 10 minutes, even if you have an hour, it's a much better use of your time to do this, to get lots of input. I'm delighted to be here and having the opportunity to talk with you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Hello, Drew. Glad to hear you. Claudio, nice to see you there. All right. Okay, so people asking how do you do this. So again, you can do this anywhere, and you can do this by, by yourself. So if you have any questions and you want to send us a mail, you can email us at info at englishanyone.com. Englishanyone.com. So there are two ways to do this. So one is doing it by yourself. 
and I talked about this, there are basically three things you can do. Number one, you focus, or actually we'll just find a topic. Let me make this more clear. So find a topic or a situation. A topic or a situation. So the topic might be fixing cars or making uh, donuts or mowing your lawn or doing whatever. It doesn't matter whatever. It should be something you are interested in though. So don't think about like English language. Think about the topic you're interested in. So anything, you can post a, a comment in the chat here and let me know what you're interested in. I can help you maybe find something more specific for that. But this should be pretty, pretty easy. Uh, again, the point is to find a topic. So we want to do something as an example like fixing, fixing a car. So to fix a car. I don't know anything about cars or fixing cars, but if I wanted to learn about that, okay, my topic is how to fix a car. I might be even more specific. I want to focus on something uh, and I'm going to find like maybe not just like fixing cars in general. I want to fix car engine and maybe a specific type of car. So how to fix, how to fix like a, I don't know, a, a, like a Mazda, I don't know, Mazda something. I don't, again, I don't know anything about cars. <laughs> I don't care about cars. I don't know anything about cars. But if I wanted to learn about that, this is just an example. You can do anything you like. Whatever your, your favorite subject is, if you like uh, ice cream or you like horses or whatever, you like traveling, any of these things will, will do perfectly fine. But if you can be specific, uh, that's the second step here. And the third step is this naturally varied review. Now you get naturally varied review by like let's say you can do it right here on YouTube. So I'm going to learn about fixing cars. I go to YouTube search, I type in how to fix cars. I'm going to get lots of different examples of that and I'm going to hear different speakers and it's going to be all in English, all right? So how to fix a car or how to play a game or how to do this, just putting in how to uh, is going to teach me a lot. I'm looking for that uh, kind of information. So does it mean learning vocabularies are related to a certain topic? Yes, I have a question. Uh, a counteract, how do I use that word? I don't know that word, is that a word? If that's a word, I don't know. <laughs> so naturally varied review, I'm going to watch different videos of people talking about the same thing. I'm going to watch different videos of people talking about the same thing. Now you can do this with English learning videos as well, but it's much better to actually just go right to the native content if you can understand it, all right? So this is how you do it by yourself. Does anybody have a question about this? We can talk about the World Cup. Yeah, you can talk about the World Cup right now. So if you go, if you want to focus on the World Cup, watch 20 different videos about a specific thing about the World Cup. Sir, please, may I have your contact number, any input platform, share my real problem for English fluency guy. Uh, if you have a problem that is not covered by what we do, uh, we probably covered everything if it's related to fluency. But this solves every problem that people have about related, you know, things related to fluency. But if you'd like to send us a mail, info at EnglishAnyone.com. Does this make sense? The idea is to get this, to build your network around a certain topic. And you do this with topic after topic after topic. It's a very simple process and it will build your fluency very quickly. Because as you learn about this topic, you can also use this vocabulary to talk about other things. All right, the point is just to become fluent in the vocabulary and that will expand your vocabulary very, very, very quickly. Isn't that cool? All right. So this is how you can do it by yourself. Now, if you'd like to do it with me, uh, that's the other option. So this is how I did it by myself. I had to teach myself Japanese because there, were no, uh, there wasn't an option to, to do that. No teacher taught this way and I don't think any Japanese teacher does teach this way. Uh, so the other option, is fluent for life. Now this is a program I have where I actually walk you step by step through a hundred different topics, but you can choose the specific things you're interested in learning, all right? So if you wanna learn about gardening or you wanna learn about giving presentations or whatever, this is how you do it.
You can find a link in uh, the description right below this video if you'd like to learn more about Fluent for Life. But Fluent for Life basically is this process. We're going to give you a topic, you have a lesson set. But it, instead of just kind of doing it by yourself where you would watch some native vocabulary, maybe you don't understand everything. I actually walk you through in simple steps to make sure you understand the vocabulary. We start simply, we start slower, and then we move up to real conversations. And as you do this, you're going to get naturally varied review. I don't want to make it sound too complicated because really you just, you sit back, you relax, and you get fluent. Because I'm going to build your network for you even if you don't speak. So it doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter how old you are, this is how you learned your native language, and if I can teach you this in English, you will get fluent in English too. All right. If you have any questions, let me know, but this is the basic idea of how you become a fluent speaker. You can do it by yourself if you like. If you're at a high enough level where you can understand a lot and, and you're not going to be too confused and, it's, and you, you don't mind not having the steps that actually show you how everything works and teaching you how to get fluent faster, it's different when you're trying to do it really by yourself. And it was a little bit uh, kind of a trouble for me as well. Also, if you don't live in an English-speaking country, it's more difficult to get that information. Uh, but you can do it on places like YouTube. But if you would like a system that's already done everything for you, so you just pick what you want to learn, you go through that and you get fluent in that vocabulary automatically. So each day you're going to go through a lesson in a different way. You're going to meet different speakers. You're going to hear different vocabulary. You're going to hear it in different ways. Okay. So the point is to focus on a specific topic and then with the time we can improve our English skill faster. Yes, that's exactly what you should be doing. So remember, these are, the, these are the different ways you can learn. You can learn something one time. So if I have an hour, I'm going to watch like five YouTube videos, five short YouTube videos, and each one of them teaches me some phrases. I may remember one or two of those phrases, maybe. And I probably will not be able to remember and automatically use that confidently in a conversation. Second option is to try to focus on a word or phrase and then repeat that again and again, but it's not how you want to learn. Why are you so kaga with your magnetic eraser? Ha ha ha, is that a joke? <laughs> I thought everybody had magnetic erasers. This is what it is. What do you do with, a, with an eraser? Your eraser doesn't stick to the board like that? It should be. I thought I, maybe that's, I don't know, Japanese technology, I guess. Put a magnet on it. You've probably seen new. This is like magnets over here. Here's a regular magnet. You just put an eraser. It sounds like there is a, like a business opportunity for you where you are to put an eraser on a magnet. <laughs> and then there you go. You can sell erasers on a magnet. See, the eraser is, the magnet is inside there. Pretty cool, huh? All right. You can probably watch YouTube videos about magnet erasers all right that's how like detailed youtube is for giving you information <laughs> so if you want to get naturally varied review about magnetic erasers you can get that information on youtube all right all i've done is i've taken like years of my being able to do this have it streamlined as a lesson set that you can do so you don't need to speak all you do is you get the input you spend your time getting all this input and you become fluent automatically all right let's see here uh, but how to admit mistakes during talking about the topic. Okay, so the next thing, the reason this works, so people wondering like how will you get fluent or how can I correct mistakes about talking about things if I learn this way. Now, if you hear lots of different native speakers say something, just like a child, you are going to learn how to say those things correctly too. The problem in, in often like in uh, traditional lessons with a teacher, even if you have a teacher there, they will say something slowly or they will say something and maybe it's, it's really just not the way that natives actually speak in real conversations. And so even if you have a teacher, it's the native input, all the correct input that tells you how to say something correctly. So you automatically learn how to speak correctly by getting the correct examples just like children. So they learn to speak by getting lots of correct examples. And even as an adult, you have more opportunities and you have uh, more advantages than a regular child trying to learn a language because you can ask questions, you know, are they, are they saying it like this? You can go back and repeat things that you want to learn. 
But this is how this solves the problem of making mistakes. It lets you correct yourself. So as you hear 20 different examples of something, you spend a whole month focusing on one thing, you learn a few hundred phrases. Um, as you do that, you feel very confident about using it. So you don't worry about making mistakes. All right. So it's often the, the information we say garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. So if you're learning with things that are causing you to make mistakes, then it's the thing that you're learning that's making the mistakes. It's not, it's not this. But if you can learn with a whole bunch of natives, you're, you're going to learn with correct examples. If you understand correct examples, you will speak correctly. Does that make sense? So this is how you can correct yourself and learn by yourself without speaking. So you get lots of different examples. I could teach you Japanese right now and do the same thing and help you understand uh, something all in Japanese. And if I could do that like a few days in a row, you would learn to speak Japanese about that particular topic. All right. Go back and see if I have... Uh, okay, so Russell... I've been living in the UK for eight years. I completely understand you, but I can't understand people here and I couldn't be fluent. So what is the solution? This is it. We have lots of people in the UK as well because the program has people from the United States, from the United Kingdom, from Canada, from uh, Australia, New Zealand. We have people from all over the planet, native speakers from all over the planet. And when you hear all those examples, it automatically improves your listening and pronunciation. So you're getting native, lots of different native examples. And as you hear all those, each time you will hear, you will spend, I don't know, there's like over a hundred different native speakers in the program. Think about that, crazy. If you, it's like being in a native environment, but in a structured, systematic way. So you're not overwhelmed. We pick a topic, whatever you want to do. And the great thing about Fluent for Life is that it, it, you do what you want to do. You don't focus on the same lessons that other people focus on. Each student is unique in the program. So you might want to focus on business-related English and also the conversational vocabulary that's used in business situations. And there's a lot of that, all right? Or maybe you just want to talk about how to go to the doctor or how to do shopping or whatever, those kinds of things. But as you go through the lesson sets and as you do one lesson set and then another one, you, you really start developing fluency very quickly. And you can take what you learn from one lesson and apply it in a different topic. The point is to build fluency in the vocabulary, but you do that by focusing on a topic. All right? So it's much better to do this than uh, by trying to learn as much as you can. If you're not already fluent, if you are not already fluent, then stop learning more. Okay? If you, if you're, if you have like this vocabulary over here, let me move my special magnets. If you have this vocabulary, let's say like this is, I don't know, let's say 200 words. So that's your vocabulary. If you are not fluent in this, then why are you trying to learn more? Don't add more to this. Understand how to get fluent in your vocabulary, then start learning more. So this teaches you how to learn correctly, how to actually learn to focus on a topic, spend time with it, and it's a naturally very review that gets you fluent. All right, let me answer some more questions over here. All right, but, uh, okay, so we answered the question about correcting mistakes. Does everyone understand about that? When you get lots of correct examples, why would you make mistakes? You're getting lots and lots and lots and lots of correct examples. And as you see those again and again, you feel very confident that you'll use the same, the same thing. All right, so Drew, this is exactly what I figured two years ago. I taught myself English, so yes, from my experience, your approach really works, yes. And I, I, I call it, I mean, I, I guess you can say it's my approach, but it's really just the native way. It's the native systematic way of learning languages. When you learn your native language this way, there are many times when you don't actually understand what people are saying. You might hear a phrase, like your dad says something when you're five years old, but you don't really understand it until you turn 10. And then you think, ah, like I understand what my dad said 20 years ago, you know. But when you learn systematically like this, you actually understand it at that time. <laughs> so it's much faster uh, and much easier, much, uh, much easier to understand things. All right, so SARS is thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Extremely helpful lessons, SAR from Vancouver. Nice. Andres says thank you again and greetings from Fortaleza, Brazil. So Thanksgiving for your scorching clue about speaking and stuff for English. Uh, how can I get fluent for life? 
Just click on the link in the description below this video uh, and you can learn more about Fluent for Life. So it will teach you uh, everything about how to get Fluent. Uh, and again, it's a completely customizable program for your situation. So if you want to become a fluent speaker and you want to have all the hard work done for you so you don't want to try to go out to YouTube and do it by yourself, I can tell you from experience, it took me a while to understand how to do it by myself when I was using it to get fluent in Japanese. Now I do it just naturally all the time. I develop the habit of learning that way, but this will teach you that. So all the lessons are all organized. You can go through and find if I want to learn from a particular kind of voice. So if you want New Zealand speaker or Canadian speaker or United States, or if you want to focus on different topics or grammar points or whatever, but the point is it teaches you all that with naturally varied review. So we're going to focus on a topic. It's the focus that gets you fluent. It's not trying to learn something once and then you forget it, or even trying to repeat one thing. It's building the network that allows you to speak. Does anyone have like a counter argument for this? <laughs> Does anyone believe this would not work? Does anyone believe this would not help them get fluent? Let me know. All right, Claudia, so could you tell us more about Fluent for Life, what I mean are the classes live? So no, Fluent for Life is not live classes. It's uh, recorded audio, video, and text. Um, and the reason we do this is because you don't need live lessons to get fluent. Now you're watching me live, but someone else watching this video tomorrow, they will still get the same lesson, they still, still get the same benefit from it, even though the lesson is not live. So hello from the, from the past if you're watching this in the future. So Fluent for Life, uh, again, it's designed for people who are busy and who want to get fluent without waiting for classes or waiting for other students or, or needing to have a native speaker around there. So Fluent for Life basically puts you in a systematic native environment where you get to focus on the things that are actually going to help you speak. And then you spend time each day, like 15 minutes a day. If you have more time, that's great. But even 15 minutes a day of getting naturally varied review is going to be better for you than trying to learn you know, one thing or even try to you know, watch two or three YouTube videos that don't actually help you speak. All right, let's see. I uh, get your ideas. Thank you so much. This is David Gladier. So you mentioned you already have a system. How does that system work? All right. So let me, uh, if you'd like to know more about uh, Fluent for Life, I'll explain that. So the idea of Fluent for Life begins with a lesson set, a lesson set. And if you'd like to learn more, you can, you can read all about this uh, by clicking on the link below this video. But we begin with a lesson set. Now that lesson set is focused on a particular conversation, a real conversation between different native speakers. It could be two native speakers, it could be three native speakers, but let's just begin with a video where we've got two people talking. So it could be an American and a Canadian, it could be an American and a, like an Australian or whatever. The point is it's a real conversation between native speakers. Now, if you just watch that, you would probably understand some of that information. You would probably uh, like, yeah, I would learn some new information, some new words or phrases, but it would mostly be overwhelming for people. It's going to teach you way too much. It's going to give you way too much information. It will be too fast. Uh, and again, it will just be overwhelming in general for you. And this is why often for learners, if you've been learning this way, then you try to go directly to conversational English, it's very frustrating just like me coming to Japan and trying to be in an immersive or native environment. So what we do is we take this and then we split it up into different pieces. And you focus on each one of these pieces and you learn them in steps. So we begin with just taking one specific thing. Again, the, the goal is to focus. So we want to focus on one thing like a grammar point uh, that's taught or that you might hear in this conversation a few times. So uh, Kian is asking if it's live. No, it is not live. But again, the, being live is, is not helpful for people because maybe you're not around when the video is live. So you just watch a video anyway. <laughs> uh, just like this. You're, you're, this video that I'm watching, if you're watching it with me right now, is live. But people watching it later will still get the same benefit. Okay? So live video doesn't get you fluent. It's the information that gets you fluent. So we take this. We've got the grammar. We're going to focus on it, but not teach you a bunch of grammar rules. I wanted to give you lots and lots of different examples 
And you're going to hear different people saying things. You're going to hear it in stories. You're going to see visual examples of it. Okay? So that's just focusing on grammar. And we're going to have a lesson after that where you're listening to stories told by different native speakers at different speeds in different ways. All right? Again, naturally varied review. So each time we're, we're taking you step by step to really make sure you understand it. So many years ago, I had a program that just taught these lesson sets and taught uh, a new one each month. It was called Master English Conversation. And so those lesson sets put together all became Fluent for Life. And so we go through each one of these steps. You're going to focus on vocabulary, maybe focus on some history and culture about that particular topic. Uh, and then when you're finally ready for the video, you're actually well prepared to understand everything. And so uh, even more examples of like the native, uh, the native speech, uh, the native examples in different ways from different native speakers. And you're seeing how all this works together. I'm going to give you even more examples after that to test your ability give you some questions to see if you remember things, if you understood it. It's not like a typical, it's more like a conversational kind of thing, just seeing if you're paying attention and remembering it. And we also give you uh, a conversation kind of starter. I call these my special mission homework assignments. So you don't have to speak to become a fluent speaker, but I know a lot of people want to use their English and I show them how to do that in different ways. So showing them how to meet different native speakers online and in person in different countries. So it doesn't matter where you live, you can meet people online if you want to or meet people in person. All right? And so as you go through the steps of this, and this is just one lesson set. It's just one lesson set. So you're going to focus on one thing. You're going to learn like a few hundred. Let's say you learn like 200, maybe 300. For this, this is like one month that you focus on this. And each time you're going to learn with it, you're going to watch it, you're going to listen to it. You might try to write a little bit of it. <coughs> Again, the point is to focus on something so you really master that information. And you build the network with a naturally varied review. Does that make sense? So this is one lesson set about a particular topic. Maybe it's talking about gardening or fishing or raising chickens in your backyard or cars or video games or telling stories or giving presentations at work, whatever, lots of different things like that. So this is one lesson set and there are 100 of them in the program, 100 of these. And the great thing about this, I want to give you so much content because you choose what you learn with. Most people will not go through all 100. You will go through maybe like 10 of them or 20 of them, whatever you want to do for your situation. And some people will move more quickly through them, other people will not. But it usually takes about a month to go through the vocabulary to make sure you remember everything. So the point again is to build the network. This is how you do it. So you can do it by yourself if you want, but this makes it much easier. Everything is all laid out for you. All you do is choose and you know exactly what to do each day. You just spend a little bit of time each day learning a bit more, and each time you come back, you're like, ah, I remember that. Now, a really interesting test for people, just to test yourself, is when you begin the lesson set, this is the first lesson you start with for that lesson set. But you could watch the conversation first. So if you watch the conversation first, and you might think, wow, this is a little bit overwhelming. I'm not really prepared for this. But if you watch the conversation first and then go through all the steps and come back to the conversation again, you feel much different. You feel much more powerful and confident because, wow, you actually understood everything. You're well prepared for this for the faster English. Does that make sense? So this is how we prepare you to go from understanding teachers, so you can understand me right now, but we want to get you to the level where you can understand natives. And so you have to be learning with actual native speech. And this is all in English. So I'm not going to teach you with Japanese or Portuguese or something like that. You're learning all in English the same way natives do. But because I teach it to you step by step, you're going to learn it all comfortably and gonna, gonna just get fluent automatically. Really, even if you don't have anyone to speak with, this will build your fluency because it's the network that makes you fluent. It's not repeating some phrase again and again. It's being prepared for a conversation for a wide range of speakers and vocabulary. All right. Let me go back and answer some questions, see if I got anything. Uh, let's see. All right. So you mentioned your, okay, I answered Claudette. Hope, Claudette, let me know if that answers your question about how Fluent for Life works. Uh, Abhishek says, 
or ab, ab yes, okay. Uh, I tend to forget phrases, advanced vocabulary, and also don't know how to construct a sentence in certain situations. How can I improve that? All right, so that's a problem about fluency that comes from learning this way. I tend to forget words and phrases, all right? So it's how you're learning the vocabulary. You remember when you build the network and you forget when you try to focus on words and phrases. And so this building the network is what we do in Fluent for Life. All right. Uh, next one. So no one will be fluent just focusing on YouTube videos and getting a clue about native speaker. The problem, there is a grammar rules and vocabulary for pretty much and focusing a lot. Blah. Yes. So this is why if you just watch YouTube videos, you could do this by yourself. It would be difficult to do. And that's why it's possible. I want to show people if they just don't want to join a program or they don't want to have anyone help them with it. Some people, usually the people who join Fluent for Life, they are professionals. These are like executives or they're doctors or, um, you know, just people who want to use uh, vocabulary fluently as quickly as possible. <laughs> so they don't want to spend a lot of time trying to teach themselves. They would rather pay someone to just show them how to do it. So this is why we cover grammar and all those things. But you can focus on the things you're interested in. So if you have specific grammar points or there are specific native speakers, you have trouble listening to those accents, you can find them all in the program. We have an index. Uh, so there's a whole index. It's like 20 pages long. It lets you choose, okay, these are here's information about each of the courses, uh, each of the lesson sets, so you can pick the particular things you want to learn about. All right, next one. Big hello from the Philippines. Jerome, nice to see you there. Uh, so Samir is saying incantation, how can I overcome the fear of speaking in front of people? All right, if you, are not, if you are not scared of speaking in front of people in your native language, then the problem is a lack of confidence because you just don't know the vocabulary very well. That's really it. If you learn one phrase and forget it, or if you learn one phrase and try to repeat that again and again, this will not help you prepare you for fluent conversations. So you will not be, okay, I'm going to be very nervous about a real conversation because I don't know what a native would say. All right? So the same idea. All right. So you're right. We should learn English uh, grammar naturally without studying it a lot. Fancy is a little Drew. Nice to see that. Right pronunciation and phonetic. Yeah. So this teaches you all of that. All right? So the point is to learn grammar. But yes, you should not be trying to study grammar textbooks. <laughs> So I wanted to give you lots of different, I'm going to like explain rules and things, but it's really more showing you how they work so you understand like a native. And then you see lots more examples. And your brain is focusing on that for that whole month. So you're really getting lots and lots of input to help you understand something. Claudette says, thank you so much, Teacher Drew. It seems so easy the way you explain it. Yes. So this is how you learned your native language. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't create anything new. All I did was systematize it, okay? And, and we, we know this works, so linguists like Dr. Stephen Crash and discover the same thing I discovered. So I found it in a park in Japan watching young kids, and he found it, he calls it comprehensible input. But comprehensible input is really just the first step, all right? So comprehensible input doesn't really help you remember something. That's why you need to continue to get it. So even in his own examples, he will talk about, like, if I could teach you every day, I would help you get fluent, all right? And that's what this is. So you don't learn something just one time. I'm going to give it to you again and again and again and again and again, but in different ways. So it's not boring. If you just try to do something again and again and again, it's going to be boring for you. So you have to hear it in different ways. You have to be prepared for the situation by hearing different ways of talking about things. You have to see how different speakers explain that. So do you recommend app to enhance speaking? I don't recommend any app. I don't know of any app that would do that for you. This is how you do it, all right? So if you're, if you're, you can either do it by yourself, by watching different content on YouTube, focusing on particular things, and it should be all in English. Don't learn through translations or try to use your native language or something like that. It should all be in English. Um, so don't use an app for that. You need to have actual native speech, okay? So at lower levels, you can use an app for that. Like we have Frederick, the app uh, that can teach lots of basic vocabulary, actually teaches over 2,000 words and sentences and can help improve your grammar or pronunciation as well. Uh, but this is really for people who want to speak, who want to take, yes, Frederick. <laughs> so people who want to take their, their English uh, to the fluent level, this is what we choose. This is what we do. 
All right. Now, I've been speaking for, it looks like, an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Hopefully, you have been enjoying this. And a lot of people have stuck with me through this whole video. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be helping you guys. But the, the whole point is really to understand how fluency works and why the typical things that most people do, do not. So if you've wondered, why am I learning? I'm spending a lot of time, but I still feel nervous. I'm still making mistakes in conversations. I'm still not understanding people. It's because of this. So watching more content on YouTube is going to give you this. But if you learn with it the right way, you can get actual fluency by using the same process, all right? Or I can just walk you right through the whole thing. And if, again, this is for people who, who, like, who care more about their time than their money, really. So the program is not cheap. You will definitely find programs that are cheaper than that, but nothing that is going to give you this, all right? Let's see. All right, so I'm a bit sad that I have to throw my grammar book away that I just purchased. <laughs> now, there is some value in a grammar book. I mean, you can go back and review things if you have a question about that. But really, the goal is to understand the grammar without needing to think about a rule. All right? So, like, if I have a door, I'm going to teach you some Japanese. I can explain. So, let, let's say, like, imagine, imagine there's a door right here. All right, so we have a door. Now I'm going to teach you some Japanese. Now, the first thing I can do is give you a bunch of explanations about transitive or intransitive verbs, as an example. So I can explain transitive verbs, what is a transitive verb, what is an intransitive verb, but it's much better if the same way I teach my own children uh, the language, so I'm going to teach Japanese to my children, I would just show them how the language works. If you understand like a native, you understand the rule and you can use the rule, but you're not trying to study rules, all right? So sometimes it's good to get explanations and we do give you explanations when it's helpful to do that, but most of it is just seeing it in action. So as an example, we have a door right here. Door wo akeru. 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 All right, I'm going to open, open the door. And then we can have the door opens is like aiteru, ha, doa ga, doa ga aiteru. Now I'm giving this as like a very quick lesson, but just to show the difference, like, I don't know, I should have like an actual door over here. But the point is, rather than talking about transitive verbs and intransitive verbs and me doing something and explaining all that, I just show you how it works. And when you understand like that, it's like, ah, like, I understand. All right, I'll give you another example, transitive and intransitive verbs, all right, without trying to explain what this is. So if I have a marker, you're just like watching me like, you know, there's like a marker over here and it's just like, ah, ochiru, ochiru, ochiru. But if I have something in my hand, ah, otosu, otosu, otosu. So one is like the thing just falling and me is dropping something, all right? Now that was a very quick, like not the ideal lesson, but that's basically what you're doing. So when children are learning a language that way, they're learning, ah, the difference like when something just like a leaf falls from a tree, ochiru, ochiru. But when I hold something and I drop it, otosu, otosu, all right? Now, if I give you that one lesson, you might think like, oh yeah, I get it, like uh, ochiru is like, you know, just kind of falls and otosu is like I drop something. Maybe you understand that. But you will probably forget the lesson if I can't give it to you again and again. So you need to see that again and again and in, in different ways. So you need to hear different speakers saying that same vocabulary. So that's why it's not just about learning the real vocabulary. So even if you watch YouTube videos that are teaching you more vocabulary, they're not getting you fluent because you're not building the network. You're not really being prepared for situations. It's a situation that gets you fluent, okay? All right, now I'm losing my voice over here, so we're gonna have to say goodbye in a moment. Uh, all right, so in sum up, yes, Adrian, Adrian's telling me to get to the point here. Uh, so I would love you to show us something about how it works the first class and you have it in the program for the next time. I really appreciate your time with us. If you go to right here on my channel, we do not have like full lesson sets, but if you go to the Master English Conversation playlist here on YouTube, you can see different examples of that. But again, like seeing one or two examples is not that the system is, 
seeing it and getting getting the whole process. I'm a bit sad that I, oh, okay, we got that one. So do you recommend a web to talk or tutor or something like that? Yeah, so Claudio, you don't need any of that. All you need is the input that's going to build your native network and let you speak fluently. So you don't need to find anywhere. You don't need a special website to go to. You can get that information right here on YouTube by, again, just focusing on particular topics you're interested in, or you can have me show you how to do it in Fluent for Life. And you can click on the link in the description below that video to do that. So Tiago says, I'm Brazilian. I need to start to speak fluency, man. Thank you for your support. Yep. Yeah. So if you'd like to do that, get Fluent for Life. It's good to have fun with English, which extremely gives us a great confidence, especially when having an English conversation with native speakers. Thank you for the lesson. All right. Yes. So thank you all for hanging around with me. Hopefully this makes sense. Most of the lessons I do on YouTube are I'm talking about kind of general things about fluency and looking at the bigger picture rather than just teaching you more words and phrases. I know my channel would probably be more successful if I just taught a bunch of words and phrases. <laughs> ah, it's, it's frustrating, but this is the thing that actually gets you fluent. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. This is, the, this is, this is why I focus on this. I'm not, my, my number one goal is not to just get like more YouTube subscribers. I don't care about that. I want to help the people who actually want to get fluent. That's why I'm here. But there are lots of channels that will tell, uh, tell you lots more vocabulary uh, and focus on that. So thank you, Drew. Anyway, always be a great person. Uh, Drew, you are amazing. You guys are too kind over here. I can't say thank you enough. All right. So very quickly again, if you learn something one time, you will likely forget it. Even if you repeat something many times, you will probably forget it. It will probably not go into your active vocabulary and it will still not prepare you for all the different situations or all the kind of different, like the different phrases or the different vocabulary, uh, the different pronunciation that you will hear in a real conversation. Only Naturally Varied Review will give you that. So you need to focus, not just try to go through one of these things. So Samir asks how to think in English. This is how you think in English. Okay. The answer to every question, the an this is what I love about learning like this, because the answer to every question, how do I sound more native? How do I actually think in the native language? How do I speak without translating? It's all right here. Okay. So if you like this, naturally varied review is the thing that gets you fluent and you can get it in. I'll write it up here for people one more time. Fluent for life. Fluent for Life is especially helpful for people who really need to speak and to need to, need to have good conversations with people. So people who are in business, academia, government, uh, people who, again, it's actually important for them to speak. If you don't really care so much about speaking or you're just watching movies, uh, maybe don't waste your time. But if you do, Fluent for Life is going to be the fastest way you can do that. All right, everyone have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.